right, the boss is quickly approaching. No! No, why did you do that? No, what? Stop! Hello everyone, welcome back to our Let's Play of Fire Emblem Three Houses. In the last two episodes, we started the Chapter 5 battle against Miklon, and in this episode, I'm hoping to wrap this up here today. So hopefully we'll finish off this battle without any casualties. We don't have any more Divine Pulse uses. I kind of uh, made some mistakes in the past couple episodes. So I'm gonna have to play it really, really tight here. Let's see how this goes. It's coming now. We might not be able to get those um, golden spots back there. You are finally going to die here. Piece of garbage. Human garbage. Next time, bring your friends. Finally. We can now progress without worrying about that. I'm gonna get the heal here. <laughs> Everybody here needs a nice group heal. What should I do? It's not quite good enough. Let's move uh, Dimitri to right here. Oh, it's gotta be. Oh, she has to be healing somebody who's directly damaged. Okay. Then it's an AoE from there. I would like to get to do in that blast range. We'll miss Petra, but... You're a big help. The boss is quickly approaching, even before some of the other ones. All right, so what's the um, what's the actual map objective here? Defeat. Okay, so yeah, once we defeat Miklin, it's all over. So we're gonna be we're gonna miss these, unfortunately. Um, we might even miss this experience here too, because we're at the point where he's here now. Oh God, that thing hurts, dude. Holy mo- Alright, we're gonna have to, um, set up quite the, uh, uh, you're definitely gonna come in handy. Sylvain, you've gotta be, like, front and center ready for this. If I can, we're gonna get you the kill, but I can't, I, I don't have, uh, the resources to mess around this time. Appreciate it. Dang. All right, we're definitely going to have to um, use a gambit on him, like absolutely, and make it land too. Uh, anybody else we can heal in range? Probably not. Dimitri wants one, but I don't know. At this point, I should just wait. And I'm glad Gilbert is not beating us to screw it all up. Bring it. What does this yield? You can do five damage and you do survive. Thank goodness you do survive with that steel lance. So we want to bring him down to within an inch of his life. Oh. Well. Could do that then. Almost seems too easy. What if, what if Dimitri has a talk with him? Huh. Dude, that doesn't seem right. Tempted to not even do that. I guess we have no choice, right? 
So, you think you can take the lance from me? I'll kill you. I'll kill every last one of you! No! No, why did you do that? That was Sylvain's kill. And, oh, and you had the nerve to get a... <sighs> Why have you come, you crest-bearing fool? I'm here for the Lance of Ruin, Miklon. Hand it over. I don't want to humiliate you, but I will. <sighs> Hurry up and die already. If not for you, if it hadn't been for you... Shut up! I'm so tired of hearing that. You've always blamed me for something that isn't my fault. <laughs> Annette. <clears throat> Not bad for your kind. A bunch of spoiled, rotten children. Oh, it's not over. It's not over, but we missed that blurb of dialogue with Sylvain. That's, uh... Okay, so that's where he ends up back there. That makes a lot of sense. What the? Miklon! Is that you? That form. Oh my. Is this your first time fighting such a thing? Then listen well to what I say. An evil power has caused them to grow quite large. Their life force is beyond a mortal like yourself. You cannot win unless you fell them twice, or even thrice. All right. Even if you've cornered one, you cannot let your guard down. Those things are even worse when threatened. Can you see that barrier? It is surrounded by great power. You must break through to fight that thing. A strong attack or gambit might help to break through more quickly. If you can break the barrier, that power will have nowhere else to go. And that will likely cause confusion for that thing. It cannot counter while confused, which means that is the best time to attack. If you break down all of their barriers, not only will they be confused, they will not be able to move for a short while. Without the power flowing around them, they will not be able to restore their barriers. They have such might that they will not fear you alone. But a battalion could prove useful on that front. Attack them with a gambit to draw their attention and force them to target you. Be on your guard when they have realized their full power. The damage caused at times like that is not contained to just one spot. Once they have charged some power up, their barriers will be restored. You really must pay close attention to those things. Distract them with a gambit, or just take them down before they can attack. In any case, think carefully before you act. But you should be conquering that thing instead of talking to me. <laughs> if you're out of questions, get over there and fight! So... This is the power of a hero's relic. To create such a sinister beast. It has gone too far. I fear all we can do now is put an end to it. Oh boy. He's gonna knock Gilbert to within an inch of his life, which is not great. So, we're gonna have Mercy heal. 
Two coming. Archer might still even cause trouble, too, if we don't uh, get up and at him. So let's move you here. Do one more up. I owe you one. You've got to be here. I guess you can go here. What are you doing, dude? You idiot. Wow. Well, you did. Okay, well. I guess I'm devoting something to actually heal you. Do I do that? Do I go for it? Let's do it. Ruptured Heaven. Actually, we need to increase the might of this gambit, so... Uh, but then the archer targets her, so that's not good. We're gonna equip... Fire... Let me make sure the attack speed is correct, right? Alright, 11 attack speed. Archer's got what? 7. Okay. That's much better. So we have the magic now. Yes. I'm gonna go for the heal. We might even need to just physic him. Good god, dude, you're hurt. Maybe it, does, it probably doesn't even matter if he dies or not, but... I just don't like that happening in general. Can we, like... No, he even has... He even counters, too. Ooh. Just yikes. Appreciate it. Maybe I should have physicked him, but I kind of feel like we'll probably need that for someone else. Much better. He's really not that important in the grand scheme of things. I'll go for this first. He's got Black Beast's attention, and he's going to do a significant amount of damage, but he'll still be okay. Um, actually, she's also going to get hit with that, too, as an AoE, I guess. But I really want to have Byleth here and do this. Seems like the way to go. There we go. All right, looks like he's stunned. He's gonna get this magic bind. Okay, which is gonna basically seal someone's magic for a turn. And when he's got no bars left, he's gonna get death blow. Yikes. That's pretty scary, honestly. Um, I think he's confused, so I don't actually know. Like, does he still get to attack next turn? Like, I'm tempted to just blast him, but I don't know. Did we just do that? Never done this before. Everyone's gonna get hit, which is not good. I don't really want to do that, but it's the only way we can make this work. And you created him too. My god. You're a monster. You're more of a monster than he is. Battalion Renewal? 
Does he not get to be... Oh, I guess he doesn't get confused now. Alright, I mean, that makes sense, but that's kind of crappy. Should have waited a turn. What is that? It's like watching a bad dream come to life. No! Alright, armor broken. I like that. Gilbert happens to be on that square. Alright, he's not gonna do much now. Okay, that's a lot better. Let's just not completely Shrek him this turn. Such an idiot. Oh, but he doesn't get to attack. Nice. Okay. Alright, so you managed to live for now, Gilbert. Can you deal with this? Or are you that unreliable? You are that unreliable with the steel bow. Hmm. Alright, let's see what we can do to deal with this. can actually do a good 18 damage there. He is on his final stage. I don't know if Sylvain's going to get extra dialogue for defeating him in this stage. We might have missed any special dialogue we were going to get, but it's probably still worth a shot as long as I don't mess anything up trying to do it. Do we have any gambits left? You don't have any gambits left. We're gonna do that. We'll lend you a hand. It's time. Get some speed, please. You guys are like allergic to that. Come on. Violet is gonna take some nasty damage. But I like this. As long as... But I don't... I hate her crit. I don't like her crit. I'm tired of you critting stuff on me. It's so annoying. Don't crit. Close one. I'm not gonna lose. No, what? Stop! God. You're screwing up everything, Annette. What's the matter with you? I didn't even... Uh, regret. So much regret. Goddess. The beast is gone. Yet Miklon and the Lance remain. It's over. Let's retrieve the Lance and leave this place. Miklon. My brother. <sighs> no, you don't deserve that. I'm mad at you right now. Very angry. We wasted EXP. We wasted that golden spot on the ground. We wasted dialogue. Oh my god. I'm so mad at you, Annette. I'm so mad. <sighs> that man. His form was changed. It was as though that lance was swallowing him whole. On that side, it makes sense that your students were upset. I wonder if those relics truly hide such power. 
Yet even still, that power seems familiar. That form as well. As one who wields the sword of the Creator, does that mean you possess that power too? Professor, you have returned. The goddess is indeed generous with her divine protection. Are you trying to get us I killed? I have already heard Gilbert's report about what happened. See to it that you keep what transpired at the tower to yourself. People would lose faith in the nobles should rumors spread of one using a relic and transforming into a monster. All regions of Fodland would fall into chaos. We must avoid that at all costs. Please ensure the students who accompanied you understand that as well. Have I made myself clear? Uh, all right. His transformation into a black beast was nothing short of divine punishment from the goddess. Punishment for someone arrogant and foolish enough to use a hero's relic even though they were unworthy and unqualified. Hmm. If someone without a crest were to wield the relic you possess, they would likely meet the same fate as Miglon. You, however, have been chosen. You are worthy of wielding the sword of the Creator, so there is no need to worry. The Church will formally return the lance to House Gautier, if you would. I wonder if this affects anything. She's probably going to like this answer, but I don't know if we should bother doing that. All right. You have my gratitude. I can see that I was right to trust you with this. Please report back. I will tell you of your new mission for the coming moon at that time. Is your meeting over, Professor? I was just thinking about something. Professor, the possession of relics and crests has been highly valued in Fargus since ancient times. It's far from uncommon for someone to lose their ability to lead their house because they don't bear a crest. Just like Miklon. It happened to my uncle as well. The eldest child of the king, and yet he never ascended to the throne. All families whose bloodlines carry the crests of the ten elites are much the same. But House Gautier takes it a step further, and absolutely requires an heir who possesses a crest. To that house, the power of crests is a necessity, not a luxury. House Gautier holds the most northern territory in the kingdom, and they have fought with the people to the north for many years. The head of that house is responsible for protecting that territory from fearsome invaders, whom they keep at bay with the power of crests and relics. In exchange for that responsibility, they are granted special privileges within the kingdom. I believe the same. Ability cannot be measured by the possession of a crest alone. I believe that Margrave Gautier was wrong to disinherit Miklon, simply because he did not bear a crest. Still, there is always a reason for why such customs stand the test of time. Imagine what this world would be like if no one placed any stock in crests. Bloodlines that carry crests would dwindle. The metaphorical blade used to oppose threats would eventually rust. <sighs> this same argument has been made time and time again across the years. Both sides are at once right and wrong. I believe those with crests and those without should acknowledge the other's strengths and learn to respect each other based on personal merits. And that doesn't apply only to crests. The same holds true for lineage, race, faith, ideologies. If we could just accept each other and make mutual concessions one step at a time, perhaps... <sighs> Who knows if that's even possible. Everyone has something that is unacceptable within them. I certainly do, and I'd wager you do as well. I wonder which is best, Professor. To cut away that which is unacceptable, or to find a way to accept it anyway. Professor, 
You have done well to complete such a difficult task. You have shown exceptional skill in leading your students. I am forever grateful for the safe return of the hero's relic. Just as I expected, you have mastered the sword of the creator. <laughs> now then, I shall tell you about your mission for the coming month. Re Archbishop! Seteth, what troubles you? Flane is missing. I cannot find her anywhere. Professor, have you seen Flane recently? Uh, definitely not at tea time. Um, that it wasn't me. I have searched everywhere. Where could she be? She may be in danger. Oh, no, no, no. What am I to do? Calm yourself, Sedith. Professor, we shall continue our discussion another time. All right, everyone, this is where we're going to have to end off this episode here today. Thank you so much for getting this far into the episode. Please let me know how your playthroughs are going in the comment section down below, and I'll see you again really soon with the next episode. See you later.